The Mark Jeffrey Podcast is part of Brit Pod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritPodScene.com or follow Brit Pod Scene on Twitter to find out more. Hello and welcome to the Mark Jeffrey Podcast Show. This is episode 35, November the 9th, 2017, recorded from the studio on the hill, southwest UK, not a million miles from London. Yeah! Now, episode 35 was once again proudly brought to you by MPC Solutions for all those computering needs. Yo, what's occurring, podcasters? Thank you for joining me once again. How's your week been? Hmm? Now, I've got one hell of a show for you this week. As per normal, me and Liam are talking about stuff, stuff that I think you may be interested in. We also have two amazing songs that I've got to play for you. One of them is sent in by Alad Thomas of Beast PR and the other from our good old friends at Shameless Promotions. The artists on tonight's show are called The Falcons and also Velt. So roll up those ankle bangers, peel back your lug holes and... Um, just take a listen. And Mr. Liam Cloak, we are live. Good evening. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm very well, thank you. And yeah, you? I'm I'm a little bit tired, mate. I'm a little bit tired this You're week. You're a little bit tired. I've had a really, really, really um, tiring weekend through no fault of... of well, actually, it was fault yeah, of mine. Yeah, it, it was, was all so, my fault, it? Yeah. Uh, may I add. Friday night, I went to Taekwondo. Had a good old session at Taekwondo training. That's a bar on the... Uh... <laughs> No, no. <laughs> hey, I, I, we've lost me there. Bar? No, no. I, uh, you, it was actual taekwondo. It's not a, a bar in the barbican. No, 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 no. It is actually okay. physical exercise called taekwondo. Oh, okay. But after that, you are right. I did go out. Um, oh, I went yeah. to the local consta- con- constabulary. No, local Nearly. constituents where alcohol is served <laughs> just down the road. I bumped into an old friend of mine that I occasionally see every now and again. And we went down to the Bullers, the pub down the road. And before we knew it, um, it well, I, it was quite well, it was one of those interesting nights, to be honest with you, because I looked at my watch and it was about 10 past nine. Well, bearing in mind, I didn't get down there till eight o'clock because I had Taekwondo and I've been in there for ages and it was like 10 past nine and it was half past nine. I thought, God, this, this night, you know, is going quite slow. Yeah. Next minute I know, it was um, quarter past 12 and Shirley, the landlady, shutting down, does anybody want a fireball whiskey? And next minute I know, we're all in the top bar necking down some fireball whiskeys. Have you tried those before? I have. They're very nice. Very nice for a winter night. Well, I was quite surprised because it's nothing like whiskey. It doesn't taste like whiskey at all, does it? To be honest, it doesn't. It's it's not. It's just a... What is it? It's cinnamon. It is a it? cinnamon it's, taste, It's a it? cinnamon and like chili kick. Yeah. It's everything. That's nah, really good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, So we had some of that. And like I say, before we knew it, it was like quarter past... 12 and then i think i might have been abducted by aliens from that point because i got home and i remember walking in the front door mm-hmm. and i remember thinking no i am going to go straight to bed and when i looked at my phone when i got into bed it was quarter past one so it actually took me about an hour to walk home for a where rate. did you go i honestly don't know i think i must i must have been abducted by aliens I tell you what, have, is, you ever, have you had that alien abduction thing ever happened to you before? Not that, no. But I tell you what is always annoying because it's always on the best nights that you go to the pub and you look up and you think, oh, it's seven o'clock, got hours here yet, it's going to be a brilliant night. And you look up and it's like half one. Yeah. You think, what? Where the hell's... I've been here for like six hours. Yeah. You've done a day's work basically in the pub. You've been drinking. And you have been there and, you, and you, you're and sober by the end of it. And you think, it's, no, it's finished. No, I, oh, I, I actually did wake up. I woke up in the morning um, about four o'clock because Zach had got up and walked downstairs and decided to start playing on the computer. But that was good. And I went downstairs and said, <laughs> Zach, Zach, it's like quarter to four. It's quarter past Daddy's four. Daddy's just gone to bed. You know, <laughs> you've got to go to bed, mate. And he said, oh, sorry, I thought it was... Um, I thought it was later. So, yeah, so he woke me up and I remember walking down the stairs and I was thinking as I'm walking down the stairs, have I left the lights on downstairs and did I leave the telly on? I couldn't remember, you know, and there he was sat down. So, yeah, it was it was a socially confusing night, I do think. Okay, well, as long as you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, well, that, so that was, that was Friday night and in all honesty, that set the weekend. I've been flagging ever since, since that evening. It was a real good old drinking session that made me tired the whole weekend. 
And um, Saturday, I'd done some decorating Saturday afternoon, which was painful to say the least. Okay. I chose decorating because it was probably the easiest job that wasn't going to actually need any energy. Nikki gave me a load of uh, Nikki gave me a load of jobs to do. How and it did was it things go, like cleaning it go, the ga- though? It was like cleaning the garage out and stuff like that. And I thought, well, actually, just moving a brush up and down and a roll up and down was probably going to be a lot better than lugging probably. big weights around and stuff. You, you, paint, know? you painted the right wall. I did paint them with right wall, mate. It's that one over there. It's looking loads better. Kid, you know, the kids have been throwing food around and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, that was what I'd done on Saturday. Um, and then we went to a fireworks display in the evening down in our local town of Saltash on the football field. We went there to the, to watch some fireworks. Um, did you go and watch any fireworks on Saturday? No, I did intend to go to that, as did um, Ross, actually, one of our fellow colleagues and... Uh, acquaintances and nick as well but we actually ended up at the pub and we so you missed the fireworks went to the pub and we well we didn't miss them we, we just didn't bother with it in the end yeah so was, what was you gonna go to the salt ash one was you yeah we were gonna pop up because we did see that that had been fairly well advertised yeah. um how was it oh i think i would have rather joined you at the pub mate I went like two years ago and they were saying it was going to be the biggest yeah. firework. It it, 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 it it was awful. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't brilliant. Then oh. Sunday um, afternoon, it was Zach's birthday party. Happy birthday, and Zach. It was not, it's actually his birthday, yeah. Oh. He's, um, it's his birthday. I'll take it back then. On the 18th, but um, oh. we had it a little bit of an early one night, so. Oh, that's all right. Um, and then that night, Sunday night, um, me mm-hmm. and Nikki had a takeaway. Now, all mm. weekend, from from the time that I started drinking on Friday night, I wanted a takeaway. I fancied an Indian. Uh, it's almost like I'm pregnant, you know, when <laughs> when you're craving something. All weekend, I've been craving Indian food. You do when you have a drink as well, though, yeah. don't you? So I, I managed to fight it all weekend, but Sunday evening, I was just like, nope. <laughs> so I went down and got some some Indian food. Are you an Indian fan? Yeah, no, I must admit. Is I that do like Indian food? What sort? What sort of Indian food do you know? What you know? What sort oh, of mate. strength curry would you normally have? Do you know, what? I am a bit of a wimp when it comes to the hot stuff. I do. I, I remember we went out once, and I just everyone was having like a vindaloo, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll have that." It nearly killed me. Did it? Nearly I've never, me. I've never had a vindaloo. Mate. I don't see the point in it, to be honest with you. Well, it's so it's, hot, you can't really. You can't really taste anything. Well, I you? used to have a mate of mine, and we'd go to, out for an Indian, and he'd be like, "Oh yeah, I need a, I need a, a fowl. I'm gonna have a fowl." And we're like, "All right, Rob. Yeah, no worries, mate." And he'd sit there, and he'd be, he'd be turning it like that, you know, because he couldn't properly chew from and gluten, he'd be, and he'd be sweat, sweating his 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 face. I can't just... right. And I'm like, Rob, are you really enjoying it? Yeah, 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 mate. And it was just like he's, it's like a he was showing off, but, but he just looked a twat. In the same way, a couple of mates and just eat the vindaloo as though it is just bread and milk it just no heat it doesn't affect them at all because it's strange but it does me i'm i'm probably a corner man yeah but like i said <laughs> I, I had a madras madras you is can't about, beat a madras. A lamb madras that's as far as it went with me nikki had yeah. a a chicken pasanda and i quite like the old Bless pasandas you. they you know those sort of curries the the almondy creamy sort of curries i think are as nice i like the coconut you know stuff yeah. like that, that is chicken nice. moglai or a pasanda that's that's what sort of thing i like mm-hmm. but i was i wasn't aware that um the most the british takeaway scene you know the takeaway food the most popular yeah. takeaway and the biggest takeaway dish in the uk is the chicken tikka masala that is the it makes sense i guess doesn't yeah it? it's a standard don't nice imagine, meal but you don't you don't visage it being an english food if you see what i mean you no. know it is an, it's the most popular english food yeah i can understand the chicken it, tikka though. masala probably you know, for quite a while actually designed in this country you know when all the indians come over um, and they brought the food over with them. It wasn't; they didn't have it over in India. Created a dish they knew we'd like. Yeah, you you couldn't you couldn't go to India and ask for a chicken tikka masala because they no. wouldn't know what you meant. But over here, you know, it was the dish that was designed for the UK from the Indians that come over in the I think the sixties, seventies, and now it is the most popular English food on the takeaway list. Yeah, too right. Oh, it's making me feel hungry again. Um, oh. So, like I say, we had that Indian and. Um, it, it was it was really really nice. I really really did in, enjoy that on on Sunday. But what I wanted to talk about you at home because I got an apology to make um, last week. I mentioned about the fifth of November being fireworks night, 
And if I forgot that, you know, you in America wouldn't really know what I'm talking about. Now, um, over in the UK, we celebrate the 5th of November as um, Bonfire Night or Guy Fawkes Night. And, um, you know, I was just reaming this off, th- not thinking at all that you wouldn't have a clue what I'm talking about. So, Liam, what, what is, what's, why do we celebrate the 5th of November over here in the UK? Well, Guy Fawkes, or we actually, or in the UK, call it Guy Fawkes Night, yeah. don't we? Um, as well as Bonfire Night. Uh, was a a chap who got involved in the gunpowder plot, which was a plot to actually blow up the Houses of Parliament because they wanted to overthrow... He was Catholic and he wanted a Catholic kind of rule of the country. And they had a group of them uh, which tried to, well, yeah, blow up with gunpowder. But he was found hiding underneath the uh, Houses of Parliament um, and he was hanged or they they actually sentenced him to death but i read this um i only found this out today he actually fell from the gantry where he was going to be hung and broke his neck so he wasn't actually executed he died from falling from the from the um where he was going to be hanged from see well i've learned something there because i didn't realize that it he was it was a religious sort of thing i didn't realize that um he'd he'd fought because he he's also known as Guido Fawkes, um, or Guido Fawkes, and he fought for the Spanish, and it's all to right. do with the Catholic side of it because he had the Catholic or his parents. I think it's all quite complicated, but basically, uh, in Britain, since fifth uh, of November sixteen o five, it has been commemorated in some way, and uh, and today it is well. I think going back, they say his effigy, so just. The the guy we call it in the UK the guy is put onto the basically made made to look like him and put onto the bonfire and yeah. burnt. I don't think we do that quite as much anymore. Well, to be fair, no. I mean, I remember as a child when we used to go to fireworks displays. Penny for the guy. Yeah, you used to have um. You, as a child, you'd make this guy. You know, you'd make this guy up and you'd take him to the fireworks display, and they'd all be lined up, and they, the guy would be judged. And then the person that had the best guy would win it. But at the end of the night, they'd chuck all these guys on the fire and they'd light a massive bonfire and there'd be a huge, great big bonfires. And then in the background, you'd have all the fireworks going off. But they don't tend to have um, fires so much now at the, the fireworks tell you displays. What, they for health and safety reasons. I, I guess believe. it is, but maybe people just can't be bothered with it anymore. But I used to enjoy that. And I know it will mean nothing to uh, our listeners, but there's a just up from our or where I live... They used to have it on the fields by Alamein, you know, where Fort View is. Well, I think there's still a bowl patch there. Yeah, but just down there, and you think how close that is to the houses. They used to have two, three hundred pallets just yeah, piled know, stack high, them all up. And they used to set fire to it. It would burn for a couple of days there, and it would burn all the grass and all that. Wait, they've got to bring it back. Can you remember when it was around the time of 5th of November? Um, because I'm a little bit older than you, I don't know what relevance this has to you. But as a child, I can rem- remember watching Blue Peter, which was a children's program on BBC One at around about it used to be about five o'clock on a on a weekday afternoon. And on the, the evening of bonfire night, like, they would always go through. Well, make sure you go to your your fire and r- take all your fire to bits and check that there's no hedgehogs under there or cats that. or anything like that. Yeah. Right. So you've just spent like weeks building this massive, great big pile, you know, pile of of um, pallets and rugs and all that stuff mm. and then they want you to climb inside and make sure there's no ham- you know any any animals that may have crawled in there no i can remember it all. yeah i this is the first year that i don't think there were as many fireworks i think it was more organized than it was people actually doing it there were quite a few like oh we had loads going off mate saturday and sunday there were but as a kid i mean probably cheapskate but from my window the bedroom window, you can see pretty much the whole that whole side of Salt Ash, and you'd watch it for hours. It was only for about twenty minutes last night. Well, I went around my mate's house the other day, Scott, and um, in his porch he had this box, and it was it was about five five and a half foot tall. This box, it was a, it was a, a thin tall box, like you know. I said to him, I said, mate, what have you got in your box? And he laughed. He goes, well, he says, me, the missus and the children, and we love fireworks. He says, in most years, he says, we spend £200 on fireworks for a firework display. Right? Yeah, exactly. I says, all right, that's a bit steep. And he goes, well, he says, we've cut down this year. We've only got about 200 I think he said 250 they possibly spoke. But he says, yeah, My we, God. this year we spent £200. He says, but we've spent it on four rockets. Right? And in this 
box was four rockets and he put on Facebook these four rockets. And I, I, I so wish that I'd been there and seen them because he actually bought them, these rockets, from a, an actual um, company that sells stuff for shows, you know, for, to, to, to provide. So these went up with a bag. And these things, right, he had them on Facebook and they were the, the, the top bit was the size <laughs> from the top of his finger to his elbow so that the rocket head was absolutely huge and he said he has to hammer it like four foot in the ground so the, imagine uh, god knows what sort of noise that went off in his neighbor we but assume I, his house is still there well i haven't heard from him since so he's either been arrested because it toppled over and blew the house up next door or <laughs> or he's tied his missus to it and fired up in the air or something now she's on the moon there's a lot of money in it mate yeah, really so, so that's what fireworks that's what we celebrate over here in the UK that is what the 5th of November is all about it sounds quite strange when you break it down into things do not you well, it is because I, like I said I was talking about it last week and I, I thought you know we do this podcast and um, you, th- you forget that people from all around the world listen to the podcast and you forget that some people you at home may not know what we're talking about no no well, through going through that I realised that the one bit that actually was to do with Guy Fawkes we don't do anymore what's that then no, the, the bonfire. Yeah. And the fireworks, which he didn't actually set off the gunpowder for, we do. <laughs> well, here you are. It's uh, a strange I'll world. I'll tell you what I did notice on the way to um, go into the fireworks displays and last night as well. Yeah. Did you see the size of the freaking moon? Big old moon, mate. It was a full moon and I've, it was massive. You could literally see you the what, craters in the moon. It was massive. Put your fireworks away. You could just sat and watch the moon all night. Oh, I love that it, was mate. cheaper. I love it. I, I would love to get a telescope. I could spend hours buying, getting a telescope and like looking up to the moon. I mean, it's not too bad where I live out here because I'm a bit, bit more out in the country than what you are. Yeah. I could get up on the deck and at the back there and aim towards the moon. I reckon we'd have some cracking views in the oh, moon. Oh, mate, there. have a few drinks. Look at my anus, your anus. <laughs> well, <laughs> have you read all the things that's been in the paper and that recently about yeah. the, um, the aliens on the moon? Have you heard about all these stories about people seeing aliens on, mo- on the moon? And I they haven't. reckon that we're. Is that we're, after a drink as well? No. They, I read it the other day and I saw it on the internet today. I mean, I know it's a load of Must tosh be true. That. But um, apparently uh, real tall figures have been spotted on the moon by NASA. And also they reckon that there there is actually something in the moon that is monitoring us from an alien civilization. I wouldn't be surprised, mate. There's got to be other things out there than just us. I I, I just, I don't know about this moon thing. It's got a bit War of the Worlds. <laughs> I just I don't know about this moon thing. I mean, do you do you between this moon? Well, thing? have we ever been on the moon? Do you do you believe that we've been on the moon? I think so. Yeah. So why do we never go on it again? It costs it's too, all it's all right. Them saying costs that, too much money, doesn't it? But does it? It does. They've been up there quite a few times, isn't it? It's not just sixty nine. I think it was seventy one. They've been up there three or four. So why do we orbit the Earth? Why are they? Why are, we, why are we orbiting the Earth all the time? Why are we sending satellites up in space? Why don't we just stick a big kick-ass aerial on the moon? Big, and you know, have it, uh, why are we sending all this rubbish into space? Why don't we just go up on the moon? I don't, I don't see. I think if if there's a big piece of land up there, somebody would buy it and put a hotel on it. But like they always say, we know more about like the moon. And we do the oceans. Yeah. Don't we? But I just, it's strange, mate. I just don't, you know, considering we supposed to have been on the moon so many times, I just don't, I don't know. We'll be talking about the earth being flat in a minute, won't we? No. No, we won't. I don't think so. So there we are. That's aliens on the moon. That's the 5th of November and all that sort of stuff. Um, And do you, do you ever find that when it's your weekend off, because it's been my weekend off here this weekend. I don't get them anymore. Don't rub it in. Okay. Do you find that when it's your Bugger. weekend off that you make the most of the time that you have off and that you have to stay up as long as you possibly can? I do try and do that. Uh, also, Why with, do we do it? Also with days off in the week as well. Yeah, some, I'm the same. For some ridiculous reason, even though I'm completely knackered, could do with going to bed at seven, I will stay up to about two or three if I have to. Nikki says to me, she says, oh, why is it you stay downstairs and don't come up to bed anymore? It's just like, I didn't, I just, because I just like to stay up You're and milking watch crap on TV. <laughs> like you have as much time. Milking every minute out of the time that you haven't <laughs> got to be in bed. <laughs> Yeah, so I like I said, I've had a, a tiring weekend, and last night I was <laughs> I was freaking tired. And rather than go to bed at a sensible hour, I stayed up until half past one and watched um, a film called Legend, starring Tom Hardy, and it's all about the craze. Have you seen that? I have not seen it. 
No. It's a really, really good film. Like I said, Tom Hardy plays the part of Reggie Cray and Ronald Cray. Is it Ronald K? Ron and Reggie, yeah. yeah. He, he actually plays both the parts of the Crays. That's now, good going. Yeah, and the Crays, you're going to tell me a little bit about the Crays in a minute, who they, exactly they are. Um, but it is an amazing, amazing film. And like I say, he plays both the characters and he does a, a cracking job. Tell us a little bit about who the Crays are, Liam. Well, if you do say so. the Crays were, as you say, Ronald or Ronnie Cray and Reginald Reggie Cray, and they were English gangsters, and they're pretty much known around the world as yeah, well because yeah. they were they're kind of credited with being well, not the first, but perpetrators of organised crime. Yeah, and, yeah, and big, you know, robberies and big goings on in East End of London during the 50s and the 60s. And they kind of uh, had a firm and it's kind of all the the gangster things that like films and things that come out of it have all been loosely based and backed on stuff like that. But uh, yeah, they, they had, they, they, they were kind of involved in everything, armed robberies, arson, uh, protection rackets, it says, uh, assaults and, uh, and murders as well. But they kind of, they got involved with like politicians and everything. So they, they kind of worm their way into everything, but they almost have kind of taken on that. They're not criminals. They're like cult figures, like almost heroes to people, aren't they? Well, you see, the problem is, is one of them. And I always get confused by the two, but you've got, um, I think it's Ronnie Cray. Ronnie Cray was, um, a homosexual, um, and he 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 was also a schizophrenic. He had, he had two sides of him. He had a nice side and he had a, a nasty side of him. And he was a, he was a, an absolute fruitcake, you know, in a, in, a, in a way. He was a nasty nasty man, you know. But he could also be a very loving man. He was a nice chap. And what was happening is that he decided that he wanted to build this town in. Um, Miranda, what's that country beginning with N? Nairobi or something like that. He wanted to build this big town and he wanted to get a grant from, um, he wanted to get a loan to build this big town, but he, he couldn't get it anywhere. So he basically um, got involved with a, a politician, Lord, I can't remember what his name was, Lord Lucas or something like that. I don't know what his name was. He got involved with him sexually and it was all a bribery thing and basically cut a long story short, it all got put in the papers and it was when the, the, it was a government change and all of this lot and it was all in the papers and the the last thing that the government wanted and I'm waffling on a little bit here now but yeah basically you know they they were they were they had all the hands in the pies you know they they were, got what they wanted and if you didn't like it you pretty much got a Chelsea smile or a good head butt like you know well in the same well it's talking about I'm just reading through here just uh, briefly but in the same pictures that they've been like unwanted things and wanted by questioning for the police and their gang, their firm, and they've got pictures like with Frank Sinatra and you know hanging oh, yeah, out in there. Yeah. So it was real. It's, it's one of the first things, especially with the British, where it had gone like the American. You know, they had a proper yeah, definitely like, not not mafia, but gangsters. That they were living the well, they, high life off off the back of their crime. They had their own nightclub. They had a couple of nightclubs, but they had a nightclub in London. I can't remember what the name of it's called. And you you would get all the top celebrities in there, you know Peggy Peggy Mitchell, what's her name in real life? Barbara Windsor. Barbara Windsor. She yeah. used to go and all Scylla Black and all those sort of people that were attractive young females at the peak of their career, you know, that would attract audiences. And they were all the the sort of people that you would get in this um, East End club. And you, you, they used to get a lot of well-respected people in there, and they got involved with a lot of well-respected boxers and all that, the likes of that. And um, they, everybody seemed to know the craze. If you was anybody mm. in the UK at that time, you knew the craze or you had some dealing with the craze. And to, and still to this day, you know, you, you get people's grandparents that remember the craze mm. in London, you know, fighting. and They made and, it their, yeah, their they life, were, didn't they? Yeah. That's their business. Yeah, yeah, they were a nasty bit of work, but they looked after their own and there was a, do you know what I mean? They were part of the like, old-fashioned... Uh, and yeah yeah so like I said that I watched that film Strange Legend starring Tom Hardy mm. and it was quite a good film I really really enjoyed it um, 
there was a lot of stuff in there that they didn't mention about the craze. There was a lot of stuff on the film that I didn't like as much as the film original craze film with those two that was on off Spandau Ballet. What are the two brothers off Spandau Ballet? Oh, Kemp. Called? Yeah, Ross Kemp and what was the other one Martin. called? Ross and Martin Kemp, is that yeah. right? Is it? I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, well, they 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 done the original Craze movie. Okay, and I just I out of the two movies, Legend and that that Craze film that they done, I thought that the ones with the Kemp brothers in was the better one out of the two. But okay. still, I do like the stuff about the Craze. I do like reading documentaries and watching documentaries all about it. And um, yeah, if you don't know anything about the craze, get on the old Tinter web, YouTube, have a little bit of a read about them because they are very, very interesting young, well, at the time, young men, really. They were very Indeed. interesting young men at the time. Yeah. yeah. Today, my D- diet started again. <laughs> yeah. That's every Monday. You may laugh. No, no. Yeah, oh. it is every Monday. But <laughs> N- Nikki, the thing is, like I said, I'm doing this fitness plan at the moment and I'm, I'm doing all right. And now I've got to start doing some cardiovascular stuff. So um, Nikki wants to lose some weight coming up to Christmas and all that sort of stuff. So the diet has started today. I'm back on the fasting diet. Okay. So every Tuesday and Thursday now I'm going to be just not eating very much at all. Seems like a strange way to do it though. Well, I don't know, mate. You you know, I don't know what to do to be honest with you. Surely it makes you so hungry then you end up just wanting to eat everything. Yeah, but on the the other days you can eat what you want. It's just on those two days, I would sooner be able to eat what I want all week and then have two days I'm like, oh God, I'm hungry. Does that make any sense? Not really. Because when you're on a diet, whenever you're on a diet, you're always just like, oh, I can't eat that. I can't have a bit of cake or I can't have a chocolate bar. I can't do this. Oh, I can't have a pint because I'm on a diet. I've got to watch my calories. But with, if, with this, you know, you can do what you normally do, but you just make sure on a Tuesday and a Thursday you you eat, drink or eat minimum amounts. You're only allowed 600 calories. So you are eating, mm. but you're only eating 600 calories rather than, what is it, 5,000 calories this men are supposed to mm. have. So um, on a Saturday and Sunday, you can have a McDonald's if you want to, or mm. you can have an Indian if you want to, or you can have 20 pints of Guinness. Well, I suppose you can't, but, um, you know. <laughs> you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't do. So anyway, I'm starting that again tomorrow. Um, and then next Sunday, that is my first weekend that I'm going to be doing my very, very first trail run. Okay. I'm going to get my, my trainers on, and I'm going to go for a run over Kill, if you fancy it. Okay. Fancy it? Fancy a jog? Might be all right. Over Kill. I'm only going to do half an hour. That's what I'm going to start. Half an hour to start off with and then and build up to a couple of hours at a get time. Get a mountain rescue on call. Well, we might do. Might find out. A, might fall down the shaft. But <laughs> um, I've been, like I said, I was, I've been looking around at trail running and all that sort of stuff and trying to find out a little bit of information about it. And funny enough, last week, like you, I don't have to tell you now at home, but you know I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. They had a lady on there. Now, forgive me, I'm probably going to get a name wrong. Her name is was Courtney DeWalter, would you say you would say her name is Liam? Yeah, so I think Courtney DeWalter. Yeah, DeWalter. We'll say DeWalter. Yeah. Now she won the Moab two hundred and forty mile run on the October the fifteenth across the Utah desert. Now I don't really know what it is other than really a, a run that some crazy ass fool would do that's two hundred and forty miles long, Liam. No, that's a that's a fair old distance. Well, yeah. that's a hell of a distance. But what's more impressive is the time that she'd done it in. Now, she was running across the Utah desert, and I listened to it, right, and she said, one minute we're walking, running through the desert, next minute we're going through a jungle, next minute we're up mountains. So you, you kind of get where I'm coming from. The time that she'd done it in, right, 240 miles was two days, nine hours, 59 minutes. That is nothing. Right? Now... That really isn't. It's no, no time That's a hell all. of a good going. Yeah. And she, I mean, I was listening to the podcast and she was saying there was times when she's up the top of this mountain and if she slipped and fell, she would be dead. Yeah. Right. Now this is the sort of running that she's doing, you know, she's also running across a desert with rattlesnakes. She's running through a jungle with like, um, bears and, um, you know, leopards and stuff like that in it. You know, this is some sort of crazy ass full running, Liam. Would you do it? I think you'd have to. You bloody well, run fast, Well, you? you would run fast. Flipping <laughs> heck. No, I, I think you'd have to build up over a fair bit of time to get to that distance, though, wouldn't you? I couldn't believe it. It's what? bad enough getting to a marathon. on That's on roads. 
the closest that she had ever come to um, 240 miles, right? She'd done a run about six months prior to that and she ran 100 miles. Yeah, but even that's still a way off, isn't it? Flipping heck. But she's jumped from 100 miles, yeah, to 240 miles from a, from a run. That's crazy. It really is. Now... The body takes some flipping... Uh, what she did say... Getting used to it. Is this run that she'd done, right? She, what she didn't tell... Well, what she did tell on the podcast, but she said that she obviously won the race, right? But she set such a huge goal for future runners, yeah. She she won it, and the person that came in second place came in 10 hours behind her, right? And when she went over the finishing line, they were 20 miles behind her, 20 hours behind her, or the equivalent of 10, sorry, 10 hours behind her or the equivalent of 20 miles behind her you think when you're setting it off or even if you're not setting off at the same time you're starting your time and they're that far behind yeah that's a hell of a distance yeah, that's like me setting off now for a run and then you setting off um 20 hours behind me like, see, oh, see, sorry 10 hours behind me it was 10 hours she finished in front and crazy. 20, the equivalent of 20 miles it really is it's unbelievable yeah it, and she also said, because Joe Rogan asked her, you know, well, what happens if you needed to go to the toilet? So she was just like, well, yeah, you know, you, you stop and go to the toilet. She said, I did have a couple of poos. Um, she says, but another, and he says, well, you know, what do you do about sleep? So she said, yeah, 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 I had a sleep. She said, I had um, a 20 minute, 21 minute sleep. So Joe Rogan's like, so you had 21 minutes. You had one sleep. She says, no, she's had three sleeps. She Divided stopped, into- yeah, she stopped two times, right? Um, so she stopped three times. She stopped 10 minutes. She stopped another 10 minutes. And on the third sleep that she had, she slept for one minute. And she said that one minute sleep that she had felt like she had been asleep all night. When the bloke woke her up, she was like, oh, how long have you let me sleep for? How long have you let me sleep for? And he goes, oh, a minute. Why did you let me sleep that long? And then she realized that he did say a minute. And um, then she got back on her way again. But you can't, I mean, even after like going to work, doing seven, eight hours, you imagine running that constantly and having no rest. Yeah. I, honestly. Crazy. It, I, I honestly couldn't believe what I was hearing, you know, and little things like she said, she was running through, she was running through the, the wooded area of it, whether it was a jungle or, or the woods, I don't know. And she said she's running along and she's getting to a stage where she's starting to hallucinate because her body is so drained and low. She's going, she's, she said she's running along and she's seeing a hammock beside her with a cheetah hanging out and then she's going along and there's a man playing a cello and she just so Joe Rogan says well, you know what did you say she just, she just waved at him and said thanks for the tunes Mr. Cello Man <laughs> you know and she was then shortly sectioned yeah, she, she knew what she was uh, seeing yeah, yeah. and you know but and she, she, she knew that she was Mind hallucinating plays tricks. and to top this all off if that wasn't enough the last 20 miles of her run right she ran it blind she actually went blind because she of went the... blind she went blind and she ran it blind and she said she was running along and she smacked her head on a tree and she went to, to you know, touch her head and she said she could feel moisture on her hand so joe says you know what was that blood she says i don't know she's because i couldn't see my hand so the last 20 miles of the race she ran so, blind. so physically broken apart that she's yeah. gone blind yeah and she was blind apparently for seven days after the race she was blind for seven days and then after a while um, she came back and then um, I think she, the race, I think she said she finished on the Saturday and she says on the Wednesday she, when she could see again, um, she was feeling a little rough till about the the Friday I and then, then she went so. out for a run again. I feel <laughs> rough after a four mile run, let alone... I, I, was, I was absolutely done in, mate. I was absolutely done in listening to it. But the body just shouldn't be able to take that, should it? No, it shouldn't. It should not. And turns out it can. <laughs> no. So honestly, it, what I'm saying here now doesn't do it any justice. Get on the Joe Rogan site. Get, um, just go on anywhere. You go on YouTube, type in Joe Rogan podcast. I don't know what number it exactly is, but the girl, she is called Courtney DeWalter. D-A-U-W-A-L-T-E-R. Courtney DeWalter. Um, look her, her up. She's. It's like I say, it was out about two weeks ago. And just watch the podcast and just listen to what she says because I honestly, I could not, could not understand what, I could not believe what I was listening to. What's the most physical thing that you've ever done, Liam? Have you, I mean, done any, anything that's really pushed you to the limit? I've done 10Ks. Done, yeah, 10Ks and some runs and 
I haven't done runs for a while, but I would, but I would quite like to have the runs again soon. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'd like to do something like that. It's just getting back into it. I think once you get back yeah. into it, you do carry on with it. But yeah, no, I used to do like 10, 15 miles out around Salt Ash and the hills, yeah. quite steep stuff. So, yeah. well, I was thinking about next year, perhaps doing the um, Plymouth Half Marathon if you if you if you fancy doing it, mate. If I, if I get off off my ass and start running a bit, I might be able to, yeah. Cool. Well, all this talk of running and exercise has kind of got me a little bit, um, I need a drink. Take away. So what we're going to do, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get an Indian and a, and a drink. We'll put some music on for you. And in a little while, me and Liam will be back if we haven't gone off for a run and we'll have a little bit, of, a little bit of a chat to you and some more. Mm. That Indian was nice, wasn't it, Liam? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, just thinking about it. no, honestly, I had that much Indian last night. 
I ate that much that I don't really, I don't think I could eat an Indian now for about another was two that, two months. Was that a local Indian? Yeah, it was. It was one down the road, and it was really nice. Yeah. But the problem is, is like you just, I end up pigging out because I don't have a takeaway that often. When I do, I just end up pigging out. You never realize. You never realize how much it is, isn't it? When you <laughs> lay it all out, it's like a banquet. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, over the last few weeks, I've been telling you at home. Um, I've been trying to build my audience um, by going on and using Google Trends. And I go on Google Trends to try and find topics at home that people are trending. Um, And then I think to myself, would you be interested in listening to it or not? And what I do is I, we talk a little bit about the things that I find on Google Trends and we tag it to the page. And it's been very, very interesting on how it has grew my audience in the last few weeks, you know, by by having different topics and hashtagging it and doing all that sort of stuff. It, It has been drawing different people in. Now, this week, I've been studying my podcast server, um, which is Libsyn, and we, I've been doing a little bit of research to find out whereabouts uh, um, around the world you guys at home listen to me from, because with Libsyn, um, as a podcast server provider, you can actually find out, you know, what where they, what they are listening you on, whether they listen to you through an app or whether they're listening to you through iTunes or through, you know, your cute computer and all that sort of stuff. So you can do that with with them. And also, it also tells you whereabouts in the world, you know, that you're listening from and also um, what region in that country that you're listening from. So I'm just going to break it down for you there and tell you, you know, basically where you at home listen to me from. Now, 53 point, sorry, 55.3 of you are from the UK. Now, oops, I'm just going to put in there, it's actually 55% of you, not 55 people, 55%. Back to you. Considering me and Liam are from the UK, mm. we're, we're always going to get a, pro, we're always going to get a big UK audience. So half of you that listen to the show are actually from the UK. Yes. 28.2% of you are from the United States. So a fair chunk of you there from the United States. And then it goes down to 8% of you are from France. And then the 8% others are from like little places all around the world, like Japan, okay. China, and that very small amounts of people that in all fairness, I'm surprised they listen because I wouldn't really know that they'd be able to, if you was from China or Japan, Liam, you would you primarily listen to a Chinese or a Japanese podcast, wouldn't you? You wouldn't really listen to a, an English podcast. I guess, but the English language is everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's what, 53% of you are from the UK, 20, what, 282 from the States, 8% from France, and then 80% of you scattered from around the world. Now, if we break that down into regions, now, this is where it gets quite interesting. The most percentage of you are from California. So we've got a huge chunk of people from California that listen to this show. That's good to hear. Yeah. Then it goes to people from Cornwall, people from Devon, people from France, and then people from Virginia. So what I'm trying to get at here now is out of all of you beautiful people at home that listen to the Mark Jeffrey podcast show, the five main regions are from California, Cornwall, Devon, France, and Virginia. And I was thinking last night, wouldn't it be nice if we could, you know, broaden that horizon, get our, our show out to more, you know, regions around the, the world? And I thought, well, how am I going to go about doing that? So my mission this month is to introduce more stories from around the globe. Um, instead of doing Google Trends from the UK, I'm going to do Google Trends worldwide uh, around the globe to attract more of a global audience so i've set liam a task every week and i don't know what we're going to call it um liam what did you say we could call it news from the world news from the world so every week liam is going to find a little story from somewhere around the world a different country other than america uk um to try and so we can hashtag it and try and grow our audience from around the world so what story have you dug out for us this week liam Well, I'm glad you asked me, Mark. Thank you, Liam. (laughs) Thank you, Mark. (laughs) No, thank you, Liam. (laughs) Well, today I thought we would go to our friends down in Australia. G'day, Bruce. G'day, Sheila. G'day, Charlene. Yeah. Other uh, other references are available. (laughs) In the Utes. Good to see we've moved on. Yeah. Um, So a rare 17th century map of Australia, one of just two left, has been found in an attic. Now, it was created in 1659 by renowned Dutch cartographer, as a map maker, uh, Joan Blau, and I've probably said that wrong, or Blau. 
We're good uh, at getting names wrong on this show, um, aren't we? Yeah, and the map was thought to have been lost forever. Um, it is called Archipelagus Orientalis. And good effort, mate. It was unearthed in 2010. Uh, in storage in Sweden after 350 years, and it has now gone on show at as Australia's National Library, uh, and it's going to be its permanent home there. So, what sort of map? What sort of map exactly is this? Then I'm a bit, a little bit confused as to what you're getting at. They they found a map. Some dudes found a map in his attic. Which, when you say that, the first thing that came into my mind was the Goonies, you know, okay. with One Eyed Willies and Treasure Map. Um, but they found this map so, in 2010, and now it's in Sweden. So 17th century map was found in Sweden. I think it was found in a bookshop that had closed down, been buried away since the 1950s, um, and and it was identified by someone who'd found it and knew what it was, and it was sold then for a whopping uh, 350,000 uh, British pounds, or 600,000 Australian dollars, uh, in 2013, and after restoration, it has gone to uh, the uh, Australian uh, Library. So, do they know who made this map then? Because I mean, when, as a civilization, did when when did civilization you know enter Australia? Because what, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't the UK didn't we send our criminals over to the, to America? That was a that was a big part of it, yeah. And and a lot of people um, emigrated to Australia. Um, through the 50s and 60s um, to kind of set up a better life. So, but when was it, dis- have you any idea when Australia was discovered? It was, do you know what, it's something that I really should know. Because the reason, but- the reason why I'm asking is, you know, say, say it was discovered, I don't know, in the 1600s or the, the 1800s or whatnot, right? Mm. Um, this map's been made in the 1700s. Who made the map? You know, because... I don't know exactly, but I, I mean, obviously, the Australia was inhabited by um, the Abori- yeah. ab- Aboriginal uh, tribes uh, long before the uh, people civilized them, and that's the way they looked at it back then. That, but actually, they lived there long before and called it their their land and uh, all the kind of cultural places and the big rocks, Uluru or the Ayers Rock. That's all Aboriginal. Uluru. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? I'd love to go to Australia. No, I think it'd be a really beautiful place to, you know, it's a really nice country, I think. Yeah. Nice people. So so it'd be interesting to see then, by talking about that, whether we managed to get any viewers from Australia this week, but just by hashtagging Australia map or something like that and see what happens and see if we get any listeners from Australia. If you if you are listening from Australia now, it'd be really, really interesting to hear from you. Get in contact me, jaff10 at hotmail.com. Send me an email or get on the Mock Jeffrey podcast show Facebook page or, or you can Twitter us um, at Mr. Jaff10. So that'd be really, really cool. Get in contact with us. Um, I love Australia. What What is your most favourite thing to come out of Australia? That's a difficult one. You know mine? What's that? Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, no, that's. that's, that's <laughs> I just remember him. You can't really beat it. And when he's when he's when he's, when he's trying to call the tribe further down, and he's got that big bit of strings. Actually, now you say it, I'm glad you say Crocodile Dundee. Why it was, wasn't it? You could have said other people, couldn't you? <laughs> I wouldn't have gone down so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do the heavy breathing. Are you anymore. not? Are you not allowed to mention him anymore, though? Are you not allowed to mention Rolf Harris anymore? Well, I think you are able to. Just people don't want to. And the fact that he's now a criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, always was. Turns out. Yeah, there you are. So no, Cro- that was Crocodile Dundee. That was my favourite one when he was like trying to contact his mate, and it, that ain't a knife, mate. This is a knife. Yeah. Hey? That's good. No, it's good. I used yeah. to love Crocodile Dundee. A neighbours back in the day. Yeah, but I would you? I just like to live out in Australia. You know, out in the in the out, out in the outback or out in the, the jungle. Would you ever fancy living in a jungle or well, anything like that? It's the like least densely populated place, isn't it? You know, you can have you can have your neighbours that are forty miles down the road or fifty miles down the Bruce. road. Bruce. Bruce with his ute. You know when you've got a doctor in an aircraft, that <laughs> is it's fairly, it's quite a bit of distance. Here, come, here comes the, the um, doctor doctor from the Wahigi tribe. Royal Australian <laughs> flying doctors, isn't it? Brilliant, mate. No, it's just, it's funny how you, you just like, all the, you just start, you know, 
imagining things how people should be from Australia. What, what do they call it when you um, stereotype? Stereotype. That's what I'm trying to think. Yeah. Of. Yeah. I, I'm, um, me and a few mates went out. Well, actually, we made real good friends with a, a couple from Australia that were staying over here. What? And the, Bruce and Charlene. But the first, <laughs> the first thing that we did. <laughs> sorry. We got, I'm sorry. When we got fairly drunk, was we were just talking. Uh, so what about Harold Bishop? <laughs> yeah, that, that's how's the first Madge? thing. You, how's how's Madge? Madge? Now, can you remember when Madge got? Can you remember when Harold Bishop yeah. went, when he went missing and he was missing for ages and ages and then somebody found him? Right, he washed up on, he was the, on, on the rocks, sheep, wasn't he? Was he that? washed up on the beach, didn't he? And he became, didn't he? Started playing the trombone in a. Um, it was in the Salvation, the Salvation Army. Salvation Army, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> who, who writes this crap oh man but it's it's beautiful stuff it's good writing brilliant anyway so moving on from <laughs> australia there is um, there is more to australia than neighbors oh yeah, oh yeah yeah brilliant place i'd love to go there yeah. 19th of november is the mm. starting of i'm a celebrity get me out of here are you a fan of that show used to be now it's I put it in the same bracket as X Factor and The Voice. It's the same every year. Yeah. Isn't it? Pretty much. I do. I must admit, I will dip in and out of it. But back in the day, when it first, it's been going a long time. I reckon it has. It must have been going about 10 years. 10 or more now. years. Yeah. Uh, probably more. It might even be towards the 15. Mm. But it, yeah, I used to watch it all the time. And they used to show it on ITV2, I think. Yeah. The live cam. Yeah. So you were able to watch it like you were with Big Brother. You were able oh, to watch it. Boring, it was boring. It was. The thing is, though, it's like with, with Big Brother, I used to like... But I did used to watch that. I used to go to the pub, come home from the pub, and I used to sit in my front room and watch them for ages, just being asleep. I think TV's changed, though, isn't it? Because a lot of people just don't watch stuff like um, I'm a Celebrity anymore. Well, we just I, watch. I, I, I do watch it, but the thing is, like you say, it does need a change. That comes back on the TV on the nineteenth of November, and I think that pretty much every country around the world now are doing their own version of "I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here." Mm. Uh, can you remember right when? Because they do the, the Bush Tucker Challenge, don't they? Yeah. You know, when you get to eat bugs and kangaroos testicles and stuff like that yeah. can you remember when we, can you remember when we when when we done our own bush tucker trial at, um, when we was at eat music can you remember that yeah and i brought you in at something for you to eat could you can you remember what you had to do it escapes me i'll probably try to blank it out of my memory what the, was it the cream cracker challenge oh can, can you man <laughs> I, st- I haven't I haven't had one since. I haven't had one since. If you've never done the cream cracker oh, challenge, right? What it is is you have to eat. Is it? Did I, was it three cream crackers? You have to eat in two I, minutes. It was wasn't a it? ridiculously small amount of cream crackers. But what you don't realise <laughs> is they soak up every single bit of spit in your mouth. So what you what you <laughs> sort of, what you sort of think you to do is like you got to eat three cream crackers in two minutes. Doesn't sound too bad if you just literally get those three cream crackers and. <laughs> Munch through the whole lot. It was painful. All three of them together, jobs are good and now nah, not at all because that it does like go like polyfiller in your mouth, Liam. That you cannot oh. breathe. He was he was choking on the dust that was in his mouth, and I've d- never seen something so funny in all my life. That's what we've done when we was at eat music. We've done our own little bush tucker trial. Um, but what what wouldn't you eat if you was on that show and you had to eat the bush tucker trial? Eyeballs, testicles. There's some rotten things to eat in there. When they get those big larvae oh. bug things where you bite in and it all the juice oh. all out of it, I don't know, I don't know. See, it's things like eyeballs and stuff like that, and like you say, kangaroo anus and stuff. I could probably Would you call me. I could probably eat that, but like you say, live widgeon me. I can't even yeah, say yeah. it. It scares me. It's not even live the things. little insects, but the big things where they're, they're massive. Big spiders. It's like a bloody the size of a like a cucumber thing you're biting into oh, it's, oh anyway that's that's back on the telly on the 19th of november and what is really nice about all of this is that ant and deck and i don't i can't remember the name i always forget their name all i can remember them is pj and duncan you know getting shot in the eye uh yeah you're blinding me man you're blinding me I can't see. I can't see. Yeah, I was a bit Scottish there rather than from from um, Newcastle. But Ant and Deck, um, they are confirmed as the presenters. And for why we ask, shouldn't they be? Because was it um, Ant or was it Deck? I always get the conf- confused. One of them was has been ill, hasn't he? It, it was he, Ant, I think. Ant, yeah. Like Partlin. Yeah, he's been ill. He's had depression, a bit of dative. Addictive, and addictive things. And things and that. And he, he's been ill. And apparently he's been in rehab and... Um, now he's he's on the mend, he's, so it'd be nice to see him back on the telly again. Love yeah, him. I kind of I kind of like Ante. Got they, a bit of a soft spot for they him. They do guys. well, they really do. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's out. Nineteenth of November. Looking forward to that. 
Now, one thing that I saw on the telly this week, um, and it's something here for our French fans out there now, um, oh, is is Patrice Evra. Um, I don't know if you saw it during the week, and Liam's got it in front of him. We watched it just a minute ago because everybody was talking about Patrice Evra, and he's doing some sort of kick and he, he oh he did a he kick, kicked his right. own fans and he plays for marseille now and he kicked his own fans and mm. we watched earlier on didn't we yeah yeah it's quite an impressive kick oh, it's a they? proper kick um yeah they marseille have suspended uh patrice evra after he aimed a kick at one of the club's own supporters before thursday's europa league tie at vittoria um, so they confirmed, or UEFA had confirmed, that it had opened a disciplinary proceedings against Evra following the incident, and the club have now taken action. So we'll wait to see what is going to uh, turn out of that. But they were actually, and I saw like the BBC when they covered it, um, kind of drew uh, similarities between Eric Cantona. I believe it was '95. It was. Was it against Crystal Palace? I, I think believe that was so. in the FA Cup. And again, similar things may come out of this. Cantona was banned for nearly a whole season, I do it, believe. It was then. the whole rest of the season, I yeah. believe, and he had quite a fine as well. I think it was £30,000. But the difference there was, was the fan that he kicked, and I'm pretty sure it was a Crystal Palace fan. So he actually kicked his his opposition's fans. Mm. Patrice uh, Evra kicked one of his own fans. But, what the hell was going on there? But, I mean... The thing is, you just can't see red like that because you know it can end your career. It's got to be a racially motivated, but, I would have thought. But I think back to the Cantona one that I was reading, something was said about Cantona's mother. And obviously that was the... that was the. And he, he's not, is, it was it, something to do about seagulls on but, the cliffs of Dover. I think, and I did see that. that that's <laughs> such a, a good reference to a... Yeah, a strange... Uh, strange press uh, thing that he, he gave but no I mean well Eric Canton I wasn't exactly the uh, the calmest of uh, chaps anyway was he so but yeah no it can end your career you have got to be careful because people are watching and you are going to be on TV doing it aren't you yeah can't get away with it no, no it's going to be interesting to see where that come from I was told um, that apart from my my taekwondo instructor Sam Sam told me that he is actually a black belt in taekwondo, Patrice Evera. And okay. there's also another chap from that plays football for um, Chelsea, who is also a black belt in taekwondo. And looking at that, you could see that he was, can't you? Because it was a proper, proper decent kick. Yeah, yeah. Now that was, it's quite a strange thing to do. <laughs> I mean, he's getting on a little bit now in, in, in football terms. Oh, yeah. So like you say, it might be, is it the end of his career? We well, don't it could know. be, could be. Talking of end of careers, moving on to Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. Sharon Osbourne has announced this week that Black Sabbath's um, frontman Ozzy Osbourne is going to be doing a farewell, farewell tour with Black Sabbath um, this year, I do believe. I don't know the exact dates. I know Liam's got something in front of him there now and he's probably going to tell us. But Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath announced their farewell tour. Now, I wasn't aware that Sharon Osbourne and Ozzy Osbourne had got back together because last time I heard, they mm -hmm. had actually split up full time this time. I'd always assume that they were still together because they seem to have that kind of thing, don't they? Yeah, but... Were they, they probably did fall out? out. They, they did, it was quite nasty oh, yeah. for a while there. But oh, yeah. Have you got more information on that one there, Liam? Well, only that, uh, yeah, they have, uh, they have announced and I think they've then officially confirmed that it will be their their final tour and they will end uh, with this tour. Um, but it's kind of not surprising really, is it? Because they They're are getting on. getting on. I believe also one of the uh, members of uh, Black Sabbath has been fairly unwell and unable really to tour. And it, it's more sensible just to call it a day than carry on, I think, with things that but they've done very well out of it. And Ozzy Osbourne, I believe, is going to be uh, one of the headliners at the, I'm going to say, Download Festival. Shut on! Yeah. But I, th I think, um, so, I mean, he's still doing music. I love and Ozzy. He, he's I still, love Ozzy. Oh, he, he, yeah, all of It the... amazes me that he can actually do anything mm. with all the, the the crap that he's put in his body over the years. How he is able to do anything, to, to me, is is amazing. I just love watching the interviews that he gives. <laughs> and even the early interviews where his, his hair is quite short and he looks... I don't want to Quite say an attractive man. I, I don't want to say normal, but he looks nothing like he is now. Like no. the kind of the the metal 
Ozzy Sharon Osbourne. doesn't look anything different because she's no, had she does. copious amounts of um, plastic surgery. But, but they're doing all right on it, and he's fallen off several uh, quad bikes since. <laughs> yeah, he has, hasn't he? And <laughs> Nearly killed himself. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, announced her farewell tour. I would have thought it would probably be next year. I'm not quite sure, but it is coming up very, very soon. They've done well out of it. <laughs> yeah. Now, what are we on now? We on Today is November the... Sixth. N- number the sixth. Remember, remember the sixth. So, um... When are you putting your Christmas decorations up, Liam? In, oh, in, in the Liam Cloak household, right. when do you put your Christmas decorations up? Yeah, it's going to be a while, yeah. It's yeah. not, but especially in our job, well, not specifically, but when you, you're driving around, you do tend to see oh, people Jesus, put them man. up very early. Yeah. Now, I'm not specifically someone who's so old-fashioned. They say they go up like Christmas Eve, come down, Boxing Day. I would if it was me, personally. But, if it was me, but I didn't have kids, I, that's what I always used to do. I guess you want your money's worth out of them if you're putting lights up, don't you? But what, a couple of weeks? A couple of weeks of them? Like a week after Christmas, I, a week before? I normally put our decorations or, or up before, on the maybe. first weekend, the first weekend of um, December. I can understand with kids because you kind of want it there. Yeah. You know. Last year was slightly different. I'd done it slightly earlier last year because I had to go in from operation. Yeah. So um, early part of December. So I put it up a, a weekend earlier last year, which was quite comical in itself because we always buy a, 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 light, a big tree. You know, we always buy a proper um, tree, not an artificial tree, a proper tree. And Nikki every year gets the measurements wrong, <laughs> right? She always says, oh, we'll, we'll, o- we'll only go for a four foot tree this year. Um, oh, six, no, it's nine. Six foot of tree later. And we, we, we bought the tree. We're out in the car park. And we're like, oh, shit, how are we going to get this tree home? You know, we're talking like a, a seven foot tree near enough, like, you know. Bigger than the car. <laughs> so what I'd done was it was a real cold day. I took the my convertible roof off my car, stuck the Christmas tree in the back, and drove through Saltash with a Christmas tree at the. And honestly, man, there was people laughing their heads. It it was something like at the scenes of the American movies. What's that one? What's that film called? Um, when the with the American family at Christmas when they're. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas oh, Vacation. Like that, yeah. it, was, it was something like that, like, you know. Um, so the reason why I ask you, Liam, is because Christmas decorations seem to be going up earlier and earlier every year. Not in my ass. N- not in my ass. And also Christmas adverts. Now, I mean, I saw, I was watching um, X Factor this weekend and there was already Christmas adverts on. The main culprit of this is John Lewis. I don't know if John Lewis have got their Christmas advert out yet. They always seem to set the mark. They always send to spend an absolute bloody fortune. Everybody always looks out for the John Lewis advert. It's become almost... Is it too early? It's become a modern day tradition, that one, isn't it? The, the John Lewis advert now. They expect it after doing all the like cute and Christmassy, magically adverts. It's crazy. I don't know. I just... You know, when should a Christmas advert, when should it be, you know? Same as the decorations. Yeah. It's yeah. probably not good for business. But. No. There you go. Anyway, we're going to play another track here now. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any Christmas song, any Christmas bells or anything like that in it. We've actually got to think when we're going to, if we're going to play a Christmas, any Christmas songs this year on this podcast. We, we could have a Christmas podcast. Yeah. Are we going to have a Christmas podcast? I think we should. Yeah, on Christmas Day. Got the whole family around. Will you and me get drunk? We'll do a Christmas pod, drunk, slice, slice a drunken of turkey podcast. And... In the meantime, here's some tunes for you. <laughs>
with songs that should have been massive hits, anthems that demand to be heard. That is the word from Pitchfork. It is really hard not to fall in love with this band, said Huffington Post. And I must admit, normally I wouldn't have liked that. But on this occasion, I really, really did. Now, I don't know what it was about this EP, but I really fell in love with it. And I listened to it about four or five times. And there's quite a few tracks on this EP. And I couldn't really find one that was any better than the other. They are called The Velt, and that was track number five called Dakini. And I know that I, it wasn't one of the tracks that I was asked to play from Shauna off the EP, but I had to play it, Shauna. Apologies, I had to play it because I really, really loved it, and I know that the listeners at home would love it. Now, the EP comes out on November the 3rd. Well, hold on. The, uh, the EP came out on November the 3rd. Apologies. And it was released by Sona Blast Records, and it's called Thanks to the Moth and Ariana Rose. Now, I hope that I pronounced that beautiful EP name correctly. As I said earlier, all the links are on my show description notes and also on my webpage, www.jaff10.simplesite.com. Go and check it out. The Mark Jeffrey Podcast is part of Brit Pod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritPodScene.com or follow Brit Pod Scene on Twitter to find out more. What, what, incidentally, what do you eat for Christmas? What, what do you, what do you, last year you told yeah. me about those Brussels sprouts. They were bloody yeah, lovely. I'll be doing them again Christmas this year. sprouts with bacon, was it? It was a little cuts of bacon yeah a bit of butter and and chestnuts Chess- oh, they were i'll tell you the whole family loved them we've got, we've got the whole family around again this christmas yeah i've got cooking for about 13 of us around the table yeah we we tend to change because uh, for quite a few years we, me and my brother and my mum go out to the grandparents we live out in the country and we kind of have a big fire and a very big house in the country very big house in the country yeah, we, we we were never that keen on turkey, to be honest. So no, we, I don't. We, we always used to have like the Aberdeen Angus, a massive bit of beef, yeah. and cook it. But now we, we've kind of gone back to turkey. Right. In fact, we had both. Yeah. Not the same well, day. Well, last year we had three lots of meat because yeah, there's so yeah. many of us here. We just got some joints we, we and, say, got, and got stoned. No, we, and, and <laughs> joints of meat. Joints of meat. We say every single year we're not going to have as much because we have so much. Yeah. And we say, no, we're not going to do it. Every year you end up in some kind of a post-Christmas dinner coma that you're just like Ugh. anyway we've already, we've already <laughs> made this a Christmas show already Lynn let's, sh- let's shut up about Christmas Christmas and I want you to tell me your topic of the week What have you found anything that you'd like to talk about this week other than your your, your Australian um, map map well actually this one I do like having a look at some of the lighter sides of, of news stories and a cat had to be rescued by firefighters <coughs> now that isn't uh, too uh, unusual But it had got stuck at the very top of a 30-foot telegraph pole on Merseyside in Bootle. Bootle. Beautiful. Uh, And it was there for over two hours. The cat had climbed up the pole in Bootle where it was spotted by a member of the public on the 30th of October. Firefighters had to use a ladder to retrieve the pet, uh, which had suffered a sore on its leg. It was taken to a vet. (laughs) What, Uh, What was she doing there? Hello, hello, <laughs> René. Oh, bonjour. My name is Yvette, a beautiful lady from France. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but they think the cat may have chased a bird up there. and got what, René's bird? And, oh, <laughs> René. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, that's something you don't see every day, is it? A cat well, on the no, top of a... Now, in the amazing world of the Mark Jeffrey podcast you show, have seen this that is something that I saw two weeks ago near where you live, funny enough. I've heard about yeah, this. Yeah, me and, me and my, my partner in crime, Mr. Monsieur Langley, we was driving the van down past near where you live and there was a RSPCA van there beside the road. And as yep. we came back later on, there's a fire engine and I said, just messing about, oh, I bet it's a, the fire brigade. There's a cat stuck up a tree. I bet they're going to blast it down with a hose pipe. Now, they didn't blast it down with a hose pipe, but they were walking in the direction of the tree with a hose pipe and a ladder. Oh, they so do I, I don't know what happened there, but... I think I did hear. I think as a last resort, they do actually... <laughs> not with a full jet, they won't hurt it. <laughs> a little pfft of the ass. But they, with the, the blanket thing, like they do in the flipping cartoons to try and catch it and then just try and coax it. And then, oh, there he's gone. And they, they caught it. So I'm sure he was fine. I hate cats. Yeah, yeah, I don't like them at all. Cats Dirty things. Always right. shitting in my garden. And the thing is, what annoys me is, then they cover it up, and then you go and go and doing your weeding, and you put your hand in it. It's like dirty little things. Sounds very much like me. Yeah, that might have been me. Liam Cloak pooping in your garden. Just watch out for that, guys. All right, Liam. 
pooping in your garden. Yeah. I think it's time to wrap that one up, Liam. Don't you? Any last words? Um, see you all next week. Nice. That's the worst one I've ever come up with. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy lives <laughs> to listen to me and him on episode 34 of the Mark Jeffrey podcast show. You can get in contact with me, jaff10 at hotmail.com. I am also on Twitter at Mr. Jaff10. We are on Facebook under the Mark Jeffrey podcast show. And please check out all of the links to tonight's musicians by finding my webpage, www.jaff10.simplesite.com. And please check out and subscribe to the Mark Jeffrey podcast show on iTunes. And while you're there, Liam, what do you have to do? Oh, le- sorry. <laughs> I feel like we've rehearsed this, but we haven't. You can leave us some feedback. A cheeky little link, so what we normally say. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I got it wrong. I shan't ask you again. Until next time, look (laughs) after yourselves and those around you. Treat others as you wish to be treated yourself. And remember, your life may not be as crazy as you once thought it was. (laughs) 